I'm going to go into it real quick, and uh, hopefully uh, I have I can answer all the questions. Um, I've been with Recology for uh, over 25 years. Uh, 20 years of my career, I worked at the San Francisco office, so we to San Francisco uh, Fire Department, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, we we got the contract here in Sonoma County about five years ago. I was getting a little burnt out to the city and was ready for a change, so we moved up here to Sonoma County. Bought a house in Santa Rosa. Love it up here. <laughs> so. So uh, yes, it's going really good. <clears throat> so let me start. Uh, we start with reduce and reuse. That's the hierarchy when it comes to um, the, the waste industry. We always want to encourage you to think about your purchases. Um, reduce what you don't absolutely need. Like I love that they have um, you know real dishes and silverware here that gets used versus disposable silverware or disposable plates. You know that obviously creates garbage. Reuse, obviously, if you have things that you're no longer useful to you, but still have useful life to do it, we always encourage you to, you know, donate things um, to organizations, family, friends, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And then, then after that comes recycle and rot, standing for the compost. So that's what we mean by recologize. Let me try this here. Okay, great. So again, we started operations here five years ago. We're an employee-owned company, so we all have stakes. Um, and the, the well-being of our company. Uh, when we took over, we had our drivers that were no, that were not Teamsters now join the Teamsters Union, so they have a fair livable wage. <clears throat> we're proud of that. That includes both the drivers, the mechanics, the sorters, and our customer service department um, have that really good benefits package too. Um, so okay, there's lots of different positions. Uh, you, uh, most people only see the drivers, but we have many people behind the scenes doing work, including myself. So that's, again, uh, the sorters, the mechanics fixing the trucks, the operations that oversee the routes. Uh, Waste Zero, that's what I do, the education outreach for, uh, I do that for commercial businesses, uh, where I meet with businesses on, on you know, taking a look at their waste, seeing what, what it is we can do to um, streamline things, make sure they're recycling and composting as much as possible and um, you know, try, to, try to make sure that they, I'm giving them the assistance they need. Customer service answer the phones, human resources take care of the employees and accounting. So if you know of anybody uh, that's looking for a good job, it looks at great benefits and uh, I think it's a great company to work for, obviously. Um, we do volunteer work. This is a group picture of us at Howard Park. We did a big cleanup there uh, a few years back where we uh, cleaned up all the garbage and uh, got mulch and spread that out of the park. So we try to be a good neighbor to our community. Our service area consists of pretty much all of Sonoma County. Uh, the exceptions, we don't have the city of Sonoma or the town of Windsor, uh, but every other city. So it's, I think it's uh, 13 different jurisdictions that we service. Uh, we also service Novato and West Marin area as well. So we have a huge um, service area. So one of the things I, I was describing a little bit that I do is, is say um, a business owner calls me and says, you know what, we're, um, my garbage bill is high, what can I do to reduce garbage? Or what can I do to, to save money or help the environment more? So I'm going to take a look at their, um, their facility. So uh, I'm going to take a look in, the, in their gray garbage bin and say, let, let's see what's actually in there. I have special gloves and everything. <laughs> Make sure that it's done right. Take a look at what it is they're throwing away. And a lot of times, Probably almost a half of the time, half of what's in their garbage bin is actually recycled or compostable material that they didn't realize. So with just a little more effort, they can go down from, uh, this is a, I believe a three yard bin, something like that's gonna be about between three and four hundred dollars a month for service. And if they can actually sort out everything and have a bigger recycled, bigger compost, Compost and recycle is a free service, so it really makes sense to financially uh, to be able to you know, divert that material out of the bin. What's left over is going to be just this little can's worth of garbage, and now that's only 120 a month, so they've saved hundreds of dollars by just making a little bit of effort um, and, and doing it right. So kind of, kind of a no-brainer <laughs> the way I see it. We want to recover resources and, and save money as well. So we say um, get pumped. This is something uh, that's a feel-good thing. Obviously, when you're making a little bit more effort, it uh, helps the environment. Um, you know, less resources are used when we can recycle what we do have. So we want to encourage people to do that. A lot of larger companies will have a green team that really kind of spearheads the program, make sure that all the other employees are doing that. We, we encourage that as well. 
So as well as uh, cost savings and feel good part of it, it actually is a California state law. <laughs> um, there's uh, SB 1383 uh, that uh, went into effect beginning of last year uh, that requires the compost for all business, residences, schools, etc. And then the recycling has been in effect for quite some time, uh, AB 341, again, requiring all commercial accounts to do that. Um, you, sometimes I've come across accounts that don't have that for one reason or another, so that's kind of what my team is doing is working to get those um, put together. Um, the goal is to try to reduce 75% uh, of landfill organics by 2025, so we've got about you know, two more years to go to, new, to do that. We also try to increase uh, edible food recovery. So maybe like an organization like this, when you have leftovers from the food, that there's organizations called, uh, I don't actually volunteer for one called Food Runners, which actually picks up prepared and uh, food and brings it to you know, homeless shelters, um, veterans halls, veterans homes, that kind of thing. Um, I do that uh, every other Wednesday at the farmer's market or over here on Farmer's Lane. At the end of the market, I pick up, I go to all the different vendors and say, do you have any leftover vegetables? A lot of times they have got ripe stuff that's not gonna last till next week's market. And then I, I bring that to a uh, women's shelter, uh, the veterans home, and also a, um, a drug treatment center for people trying to get their lives together. So I think it's a really good, a good way to, you know, again, not wasting anything is, is the goal. <clears throat> also, uh, this is uh, SB 1383 is California's uh, response to uh, the climate crisis that we're dealing with. As you know, you probably read in the paper on a regular basis. You know, record temperatures this summer. Um, you know, wildfires, um, floods, all that kind of stuff. Um, what I understand is that the um, landfills, when food goes into the garbage, again, it gets brought straight to the landfill, we don't sort that material at all, just gets buried, nobody, nobody goes through it. So when food goes there, um, obviously when it starts breaking down, it's gonna create that methane gas, um, you know, much worse than even CO2. And um, you know, when that's happening, that's, I believe landfills are the third largest emitter of uh, methane gas behind transportation and agriculture. So this is a way to kind of help mitigate some of those, um, the, the odor on that. So composting, um, it's really simple and easy. I know a lot of people sometimes get confused about it, but I want to go over some of the details today. So um, pretty much all food scraps. So any, unlike a backyard compost program where you can't take meat and dairy, we can take all food. So meat, bones, dairy, eggshells, that kind of stuff. We also take things um, not edible, like uh, coffee grounds, tea, tea bags, um, pizza boxes, um, napkins, tissues, paper towels, that can all go in there as well. So we want to collect that. And then also in the green bin, of course, pretty much all yard waste. So again, your, your branches, grass clippings, flower arrangements, that type of stuff. Uh, the few exceptions are going to be um, no uh, uh, palm fronds from you know palm trees, uh, no poisonous plants, no poison oak, no poison ivy, cactuses, things like that that wouldn't compost well. Um, they want those in the garbage in general. So generally, if it came from a plant or an animal, we want it in the compost bin. The exception would be um, no cat and dog waste uh, in there. But if you had a smaller, you know, a hamster or a rabbit or something like that, their bedding would go in there. That's fine. Uh, there's no meat eating animals. Um, what we also don't want, what's considered contamination in the compost, is going to be um, any, any plastic, styrofoam, glass, uh, latex gloves, plastic utensils, any kind of plastic bags, containers like that. Um, those are definitely not going to break down and will contaminate the compost. We also, the processors have set stickers, believe it or not, I asked them, you know, what, what are some of the most common difficult things that you have to do with? He says, believe it or not, those little tiny stickers on produce um, are problematic because they're plastic and they just don't break down, so they end up having to pull those off. So if you have a, you know, banana peel and avocado, make sure you take the stickers off before they um, go into the compost. This one, uh, this is a special compostable cup. It kind of looks like a, a plastic cup, but it's actually um, made out of uh, a, a material called polylactic acid. It's, uh, they have, you'll see on the bottom it says PLA, stands for that. Um, unfortunately, the processors do not want those in the compost. Uh, the, the people that make the plastic looking utensils and those cups, 
they're not lying when it does say compostable on them. It's, the thing is, it takes about three or four years for them to break down in the composting facility, and our process is about three or four months, so it just doesn't break down in the time period that they need it to. It also um, it renders the compost non-organic because it's considered a synthetic material, and organic compost is the highest uh, you know, quality. Um, they can sell a ton of compost, uh, uh, Omri, uh, Omri certified organic compost for about $25 a ton, um, and whereas if it's contaminated with um, you know, synthetic material like that, it's only $5 a ton. So it's, it's literally dirt cheap. <laughs> but, you know, we want to, obviously they want to get a, as much a higher yield. There's a lot of labor and, you know, land use involved, and they want to, you know, try to get a uh, return on their investment on that too. So that's, that's a little bit of the reason why. So this kind of just talks about the life cycle of how it works. Again, if you have leftover food, it goes into the green bin, it gets brought to our composting facility, gets processed over about a three month period. The farmers then purchase it from us and then uh, spread it out on their fields. Um, and then all the nutrients uh, from the food, all the fiber from the, the paper products are now going back into the soil. And, and now you know, their, their plants, that their crops that they're growing are, are benefiting from all that soil. Um, you know, the strength that we don't have to um, water as often because the, the paper fibers hold the water. So when it rains, you know, again, they, don't, they, they hold onto the water a lot longer. It also helps with um, erosion where if it's windy, it's not blowing around because it's more of a thick kind of pumice type of material. And then of course all the nutrients go into the roots of the plants. The plants grow bigger and stronger. The farmers get a lot, a much higher yield. So it's really beneficial to the farmers. You know, we thought, hey, wouldn't it be a great idea to help the farmers? This is part of the solution <laughs> to do that. So again, and then again, so it's not going into the landfill being something detrimental. It's being something beneficial. It does take a little effort. I think it's hopefully you think it's worth it as well. Uh, this talks a little bit about the, uh, the processing. When it comes to a composting facility, it goes through a giant grinder, so we grind the food waste and the yard waste all together. It goes into um, these windrows uh, called an aerated static pile. So it's, it's a cement block and it has air that gets pushed through it 15 minutes of every hour to help speed the breakdown of the material, so it goes faster than a regular backyard program. Machines that turn and water it, and then the material gets uh, screened out and then turns into this dark rich hummus. As soon as we produce the compost, it gets bought up, the farmers are asking for more. So the more we can get, the, the, again, the more we're helping our, our agricultural community. Um, next is um, talk about recycle. Um, most people you know, un they understand some of the basics, but I want to go over some of the details to make sure we're all really clear. <laughs> so, uh, whoops, let me go back. So we want clean and dry paper. Again, food soil paper in the compost, clean and dry paper in the recycle because that's gonna turn into new paper. Soil paper is gonna get moldy, so we can't recycle that, so that definitely would have to go into the um, compost. <clears throat> so that we also includes milk cartons, juice cartons, um, aseptic containers, like those broth containers, the rectangular shaped ones. We can take that way to the market for those type of materials. Glass is limited to food and beverage grade glass. So if you had any stemware, a drinking glass, a vase, window breaks, that melts at a different temperature, we're not able to recycle that, so that would have to go into the regular garbage. How about plastic milk cartons? <clears throat> plastic milk cartons we can definitely recycle, yes, thank you. Um, and then uh, pretty much all metal containers, so aluminum cans, tin cans, that kind of stuff can also um, definitely also uh, <coughs> recycle as well. And then plastics is where it gets tricky. <laughs> um, a lot of people think anything plastic is, is recyclable. It's definitely not the case. We have a pretty limited market because um, recently we changed um, where <clears throat> for many, many years, again, it wasn't just here in Sonoma County, worldwide, everyone was sending their material to China uh, to get processed. And after many decades, you know, again, not just here, but Globally, they kept getting a lot of garbage mixed in with it. And after you know, years of that, China said, you know what, we're, we're done with taking the world's garbage. So they, they really put down their, um, their foot in saying that you know, we want to make sure that the quality is very high. 
uh, and, and the, a lot of MRFs, the material recovery facilities that uh, process it, had trouble you know, getting to that quality. Recology, we've always had high standards, so it wasn't a problem for this. But there's also documentaries about some you know, not as reputable companies um, in China that were buying the material just to capture a small amount. The rest were kind of illegally dumped. And there's just plastics. They just never go away. They, they can break, just break down into smaller and smaller pieces like microplastics, but they're not going away. So it's something we want to try to step away from. So we've also tried to keep our, our plastics uh, just in domestic markets. We're not sending any plastics overseas anymore. So basically that means it's pretty much limited to bottles, tubs, and jugs. Rigid plastic bottles, tubs, and jugs is the only type of plastic we take. So no plastic bags, no plastic film wrap, no little scrap plastic, something like that. Um, only just bottles, tubs, and jugs. Everything does have to be clean and dry as well. So um, again, there's lots of benefits, natural resources that are saved, a ton of paper, so that's a pile about the size of an elephant, is gonna be saving 17 trees, two barrels of oil, 7,000 gallons of water, 4,100 kilowatts of electricity, and saving three cubic um, yards of landfill space. So lots of environmental benefits as well. We'll talk about the life cycle of the recycle, uh, I'm sorry, what goes into the blue bin. Uh, once the material gets picked up by our trucks, it gets brought to our uh, material recovery facility, or MRF. Um, that's where my office is located on Standish Avenue between Todd and Hearn Roads. Right now, we're actually going through a $28 million upgrade to our MRF. Um, so we're going to get uh, seven infrared sorters. So it's going to be more sorted by machines than, than people, but, but don't worry, the people are keeping their jobs. We have other things for them to do. Because um, we want to have a state-of-the-art facility to be able to capture as much as possible and have it be as clean as possible as well. Um, <clears throat> we do need to make sure that you know, it, it's done correctly. So uh, what it's supposed to be, the construction is supposed to be finished about the beginning of next year. We hope to open it up to tours at that time. Um, I'm usually the person that leads the tours, so hopefully if you decide to come check it out sometime, um, you'll see me again. <laughs> so all the material gets uh, baled. Uh, we, have, we have two large balers now. Oops. And then, um, then it gets shipped out to the to the markets. Right now, the only uh, material that we're shipping out uh, overseas is paper and cardboard. Everything else is processed domestically. Um, the importance of recycling correctly is as important as recycling as well. So, like I said, it's half manually, half mechanically sorted. So I remind people: if your garbage bin is full and you think, "Oh, there's room in the recycle," I'll put it there. Please don't do that. <laughs> um, or we have people that are again are manually sorting it, and just like you wouldn't want to go through someone else's garbage, they don't want to either. Their job is to you know sort the different materials to different categories, not th go through someone's garbage. Um, so you know, please make sure that it is separated because all three bins are going to three very different places. Um, also, again, no plastic bags at all. We want the material loose or in paper bags is, is okay, but nothing in um, plastic bags, please. Some of the problems that I think happens when it's contamination, these are spindles at the end of our sort line. These are going really fast and how, how it works at the end of the sort line is the flat surface of paper and cardboard um, goes up on that top part and separates out, everything else falls through. So if there's any kind of tangleable material, again like plastic bags, clothing, electrical cords, um, you know, different, any kind of thing that could get tangled in there. It gets caught up in our spindles, jams the equipment, and then we have to send a mechanic in to get that all cleaned out while our, everyone's waiting around. So if you think it's no big deal, throw a plastic bag in there and letting you know it is. <laughs> Please don't. Also keeping any food or liquids out of it, so make sure um, food is, and liquids are wiped out. If you can hold it upside down, nothing's dripping out, then that, that's clean enough. Um, we'd love to have it even cleaner, but at least if you, know, if you don't have any liquid in it, we appreciate that tremendously. Keeps the inside of your bin clean, too. On our website, uh, we have a kind of a Google search version called Wet Bin. So if you're ever not sure, maybe you're having a disagreement with your significant other about, yeah, this goes in the recycle. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you can always check our website 24-7, recology.com, and there's RSM Wet Bin. You would type in what it is you're, if you're not sure of, hit the search button, it'll come up. Now, you, this time they typed in napkins, goes to compost, and just a little explanation of please put napkins in the compost. So. 
another resource for you. <laughs> All right, so lastly, what is garbage? <laughs> so garbage is gonna be anything that's not reusable, not donatable, not recyclable, not compostable, and not hazardous. We don't want any of those things in any of our bins, right? So if there's nothing else we can do with it, then it, then it would go into the garbage. So again, things like styrofoam, plastic bags, snack food wrappers, dishware, um, single-use plastic, so no, uh, uh, no plastic uh, sandwich bags, uh, utensils, straws, gloves, masks, unfortunately as well. Um, what you can do with hazardous waste, um, hazardous waste is a very heavily regulated industry. We do not have a hazardous waste hauling permit. So um, the county is the, is the agency that takes care of that. So again, you'll find that information in the county guide. Um, they have free drop-off sites. I think, it's, I think it's even once a week uh, in different parts of the county that we can bring that material. Also, we can bring it to the transfer station. Uh, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays, they're open for uh, a limited uh, number of times on that. So you can bring that too. The only exception um, that we can take is batteries, but they cannot be in your blue recycle bin. If you have a cart service at, at home, you would have to put it in a plastic bag on top of the bin, not inside, because it can create fires. <laughs> We've had many fires at our uh, Murph in San Francisco. Luckily, they've been really small. Um, but if a battery goes in the recycle, there's a lot of moving equipment that can uh, spark that battery myself. <laughs> I worked on the tipping floor before and, and saw when the loader was scooping up the material, he ran across a battery and I see a little flame like this and there's a mountain of paper behind me on my oh, I had to run over and stomp it out. So it really can cause a problem if batteries get in the recycle. We don't want them in any of our bins, so make sure that you have awareness on that. There's more drop-off sites uh, listed in the, the guide as well. Um, this is a still shot from a documentary movie called Trashed. Uh, that's Jeremy Irons. Uh, he's in <coughs> Lebanon, uh, I believe, in this picture. Um, it talks about kind of how other countries deal with waste, some better than others. Uh, obviously, we're, we're, we're benefited in the United States by having you know, EPA and environmental organizations that are trying to make sure that people aren't illegally dumping things that can harm our environment. So it's a really good movie if you like documentaries. Uh, it came out in, I think, in 2012. Uh, and there's another movie called Kiss the Ground. That one features um, Woody Harrelson. And we promote these documentaries because actually Recology is featured in it. We actually are known worldwide for our efforts. We're kind of a different garbage company. The, um, unlike uh, most of the other garbage companies, obviously bringing stuff just to the landfill uh, is the easiest and cheapest thing. <laughs> uh, we're trying to focus more on education and reduction. Uh, we're again putting millions of dollars in investing into our recycling and, and composting facilities too. So kiss, kiss the ground and uh, trash if you get a chance to see those. You can get them on Netflix or at the library. <clears throat> and again, lastly, some of the things you can do on a daily basis that helps reduce waste. Um, it's sure you can recycle a plastic water bottle, but having a reusable one is even better. Uh, we have utensil kits you can get it um, sometimes at whole, uh, Whole Foods and other health food stores. You can get that. Bringing a bag to the grocery store if you bring lunch somewhere, having it a reusable container instead of a plastic bag. Again, when you have get-togethers with family and friends using regular dishes instead of disposable, little things like that, buying durable goods, you know, some, something cheap, um, something that's gonna maybe you have to spend a few extra dollars but it lasts longer, those little things really add up to, to less material in the landfill. So we wanna encourage that. Okay, so our contact information is here. Any questions? Go ahead. You have, um, I'm not sure what you call it, but twice a year, a large item option I don't know if that's in every community or not. So you're talking about the bulky item collection? Yeah. So um, every every city uh, negotiates with us as far as what it is they want to offer uh, for their for the residents. So uh, my territory is Santa Rosa. So I do know in Santa Rosa, every single family, household, and apartment building can get two free pickups per year. I believe it's limited to about 10 items. 
So um, if you had a specific item, you know, sofa, electronics, mattresses, um, we need to have those things listed so they know what type of truck to send, and then there's a limit. If, when it comes to apartments, it has to be the manager calls in on behalf of the tenants and, and they would schedule it. But if you have a single family house, uh, throughout the calendar year, you can do two free pickups, yeah. I had an interesting conversation with your representative calling about that uh, chief. Uh, you know, I was wanting to put it out uh, quite a bit of um, scrap baseboard that we had uh, installed and was what was left over from mm -hmm. a baseboard installation. And she said, "How much is there?" I said, "How much am I allowed?" Ugh. Well, you. You tell me how much you have, and I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, ge it's generally about three cubic yards okay. maximum. Yeah, three cubic yards maximum. Uh -huh. And it, it says so on the website. Okay. We might have had a new person. I apologize for that. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Your question? Uh, how, how do you deal with composites? I'm thinking of like, let's say I get a Safeway milk carton and it has plastic on the top, and then the rest of it is, I guess, some yeah. sort of paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, how does that get taken care of? So it right. It, right, and you would think, yeah, because both the aseptic containers and the cartons, it, it does have multi layers of stuff. Um, I, I actually went to a recycle conference and they, they addressed that issue and they said the processors, they, it's not a problem for them. They, because of the consistency of just, you know, generally the type of material it is. It's not a problem, so yeah, they're able to take it. So we trust me, we wouldn't put it in information out there that we can take it if we couldn't. Um, so we, you know, we want to make sure that there's a market. So it, it makes sense for us to be do that, uh, you know, in, in as well. Go ahead, question. Go ahead. Yes, I'm, I'm in City Santa Rosa, and um, the college has been pushing us to compost more and more. We have a large um, property, mm -hmm. and our green can gets full of um, our yard waste mm -hmm. very quickly. So here I am the day before it's pickup, I've got some compost, my green waste is full, my gray waste is empty, mm -hmm. and if I want a second green waste, you're gonna charge me 10 bucks. Mm -hmm. So how is that encouraging us to compost or you're charging us extra mm -hmm. for another compost bin? Right, no, I, I get that. Um, here's the thing. With the rate is also they, they did, did a study you know as far as like how long it takes the truck to to, to you know, stop and pick up three different bins. So the rate is based on uh, you know a time component as far as that. So obviously anytime there's additional bins, that's additional time that the truck has to do and additional material that we have to take. I agree they we want to encourage you, but at the same time we have to cover you know some of our costs to, to do that. So an additional bin would be an additional fee. <coughs> Uh, to do that because of that. Yet outside in the county, we have a second home in the county, mm -hmm. we do get two bins. Right, because again, every every contract is a little bit different as far as how they negotiated that. Like yeah, I, we're, we're discouraged from composting because uh, we have room in the gray bin and we don't have room in the gray bin. Mm -hmm. I, I get it, yeah. I mean, that's, that's operations and, and the contractors that, that made the contract, that's what they decided on. I understand your frustration. Sorry about that. <laughs> but we, uh, I had a question in the back over here. I'm sorry, you guys are waiting. Can you repeat the question? Pizza boxes carved out okay for the green What's special about pizza boxes? Well, pizza boxes don't have a, coat, a plastic coating on them. You know, you'll see um, sometimes uh, to-go containers will have a shiny, uh, you know, coating on the inside, that's a plastic coating, so they don't want any plastics in the compost, whereas pizza box is just straight paper, so that can go, that's why it can go in there. And, and you know, 90% of the time when you get a pizza, it, it's going to be stained, you know, from the cheese or uh, the bread or something like that, so we can take that. Okay, go ahead. My cat food cans are lined with a white coating inside mm -hmm. of those. I've been recycling them, but I mm -hmm. wasn't sure those were legal to do. Yeah, yeah, we can take those in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that kind of coating is not, not a problem when it comes to the metal containers. <laughs> but, but cat litter is, is garbage? Right, yeah, so I have I have a cat too, and I use the, it's called Sweet Scoop. It's a special kind of, you know, natural litter. Unfortunately, there's still chemical compounds in it, and then, again, they just want to make sure there's no pathogens, just like you wouldn't want your cat or dog to, you know, use the bathroom in your, in your garden. The, the farmers don't want that too. So, yeah, no cat or dog litter. Uh, in the compost, or you know, no, no dog waste, I should say, even in a compostable bag. <laughs> okay, question what about there. Shredded documents. 
Yeah, shredded paper, we actually want that in the compost. Uh, it, it, it's great at absorbing liquids that you have, keeping your, your bin dry. It's also a great barrier against any bugs so they can't get to the food and, and feed off of that, so it deters that. It also deters uh, odors as well. Um, we can't really capture it in the recycle because it's such a small one. It's going to fly around in our facility. If you, when you do a tour of our facility, you'll see it looks like it's, it's snowed because there's little pieces of white paper all over. So we definitely prefer it in the compost, absolutely. Question there? Okay. It seems when you go to the grocery store now, just about everything is in a little plastic thing. Mm -hmm. You buy a, a few fruits or muffins or mm -hmm. almost anything, it's in one of these little shell packs. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that there's an awful lot of that getting composed. And my question to you is, what is going on, I guess, at the state level to see if we can get back to uh, paper bags for a lot of this stuff? I, I agree, yeah. Uh, I mean, w when it comes to uh, products that are made, the, the pro people that are selling products, they they want to make sure that it, you know it stays fresh, that it, it's you know sexy packaging. You know, a lot of times, especially clear packaging, that you know people like to see the food that's in there. So, and and, and those are markets that are coming from all over the world. You know, a lot of times, you know, especially produce. You know, in the winter is being grown on the other side of the planet. So um, unfortunately, the, the people that are producing the material and those of us end users that are having to deal with the, that aftermath, they don't always talk to each other, and, and that's a problem as far as that. Um, I know Whole Foods, I shop there sometimes, um, they have paper bags. You can certainly bring your own paper bag into the grocery store instead of using plastic bags. Um, I shop at the farmer's market and I just have a, a regular basket. That's where I try to get most of my produce because again, you're, you're buying right from the farmer and you don't have to use plastic bags. You can bring your own you know, container to hold it with. So there, there's options about it. But yeah, talk to the managers about it and let them know that, hey, I wish we had paper bags that they're more environmentally friendly. Because if they hear from their customers, a lot of times that's when they make changes. Hmm. Question here. <clears throat> on the edible food thing, out of curiosity, so we have an open container or open tray of uh, shepherd's pie. Mm -hmm. What's not finished, mm -hmm. can that be taken to homeless uh, or... Uh, yeah, you can you can call uh, Sonoma Food Runners and talk to them about the, the details of it. They'll, they'll they would handle it. Usually they would yeah, put it in um, some kind of container that they would, like, you know, those um, foil uh, aluminum trays that they would take it to and, and would use it that way. Yeah, question here, go ahead. I was wondering if you would assign a, a letter grade to us, the public, for how well <laughs> we get the proper material into the proper bin at you know at home and in public. You know, I go to these fairs and whatnot, and what a festival! And it looks to me like mm -hmm. by the end of the afternoon, every bin looks has the same crap in it. That people are not. I was wondering how you would grade us. Right. Okay. Thank you for asking that. That's a great question. So he's asking for a grade on, on how we're doing in Sonoma County. So um, the reason why San Francisco was is in these documentaries is because San Francisco has the highest diversion rate. Uh, we've been working on our programs for, for 20 years, pretty much you know my, the whole length of my career. Um, at that time, I started in '97. The garbage industry was really changing, where they you know, went from a garbage company to a resource recovery. That's kind of the more the focus. So um, because we've been working on it so long, we're at an 81% diversion rate um, in San Francisco. Guess how much we are here in Santa Rosa, Santa Rosa, Sonoma County. <laughs> Something less than that. Yeah, it's, we're about 45 to 50%. So we've got a lot of, a lot of work to do. Um, and that, that's why we're doing educational opportunities like this to really make sure that you know, it, it's hitting home how important this is. You know, we're saving resources, we're saving the planet, you know, it's, it's saving money. I mean, there's nothing but benefits. But it takes effort and it's behavior change and sometimes that's, that's really hard. Um, when it comes to special events specifically, we do have um, like oversized signs that some events can, can um, purchase or, or rent from us. Uh, that they can use. Also, some events will have a monitor or there's someone standing at the bin. That's usually what it takes to be successful. Otherwise, people are like, oh, this, it's, easy, you know, it's closer for me to just put this in this bin. I'm just going to do that. So it's, it's, 
In, in the many years I've been doing this, it really just boils down to conscientiousness, um, you know, being aware of what we need to do, um, take, and making the effort to, to do it, and just caring. I mean, that's when it comes to any system in our society, that's what's going to really make a difference. So, yeah, it's we 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 have room for improvement. To <laughs> the short answer. <laughs> a question here. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes. Uh, lithium batteries. Do you take lithium batteries? Um, lithium batteries, um, I, I, if I remember right, I think we do not take those. You have to take them to a facility, uh, like there's batteries and bulbs, or most hardware stores will take those. Um, I, I know you have to uh, take the ends of those. I'm pretty sure it's just household batteries that go in there. Um, right. Again, you, you can it, the drop battery drop-off information is in the guide here. Question? Yeah. Uh, styrofoam. Is that garbage? Styrofoam is absolutely garbage. Um, if you have uh, the packing peanuts, a lot of times um, packing, uh, like you, mailbox, etc., UPS stores will take them back for reuse. That's one possibility. Um, I know at our San Francisco facility, at our, our transfer station there, they have a, a styrofoam densifier where people can drop off block styrofoam there. And we have a machine that melts it down into these blocks that they end up making um, crown molding out of or picture frames and that kind of stuff. We don't have that here in Sonoma yeah. County yet. It's an expensive machine, but maybe at some point. Yeah, but unfortunately it's just garbage at this point. Is it true, you know the little styrofoam balls that they use? In packing, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, if you put it in your yeah. hand, run water on it. If it dissolves, it can go mm -hmm. combustible, right? There, right. There are there is a compostable type of packing material right. like that, and he's he's correct. If you put it under water and it melts, then we know it's compostable and actually can go in there. So, but it's pretty rare that you would get that. You, you know, maybe for like a, um, you know some kind of environmental agency or something that that sold very you know or had to let that kind of conscientiousness would have that. Yeah. Question in the back. Go ahead. <laughs> fluorescent light bulbs. Okay, so again, those have mercury in them, so we cannot take them in, in any of our bins. Uh, but again, there's free drop-off sites. Most hardware stores, batteries and bulbs, um, uh, Friedman's takes them, and also, uh, what's the other one? Best Buy, too. So you, can, you can check. Call them beforehand to make sure, but yeah, that's, that's my understanding. Question, take that. There. question there, go ahead. Are there many states that still have no recycling Rules whatsoever. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. They haven't. They haven't gotten the memo, I guess. <laughs> but unfortunately, yeah. It, it, because um, California, a very you know forward-thinking uh, state. You know, we're we're trying to be progressive in, in addressing this issue. But yeah, I know people from the Midwest and back east. Um, I'm, I'm from New York originally. New York's pretty good. The big cities are big. It's it's kind of more the rural areas or, or midwestern towns that just you know maybe. They don't. They have lots of landfill space, so they don't think it's a big deal. Um, you know, that's part of it. And again, it's behavior change. Oh, we've just we've always done it this way. Why should we do it different? Why, you know, why make that effort? And I, I try to, you know, <laughs> state my case. Go ahead. I think you mentioned this, but like if you buy the uh, sorry, whole chickens, roasted chickens from uh -huh. Costco, you don't put those in a plastic bag and they throw them in. Correct, right. So rotisserie chicken or any other food waste. Those bones separate. You can put it in a paper bag because uh, yeah, I try to. Obviously, you want to try to keep your bin, you know, your cart as clean as possible. So I put mine in. in I usually I'll double paper bag, uh, line it with a newspaper, and that's my compost bin for my in my house. And then just put all the food there, and then roll it up and put it in my com uh, my compost and bin. The bones go in too. Bones? Which, which which bin? In the green. The green. The green. Bin. We can take green. With no plastic. Correct. No plastics. Okay, thank you. Yeah, they can they can handle the bones. Question in the back. What about the curing uh, K cups? Oh, I don't like those. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, in years past they had just those paper coffee filters. When you made coffee, it made it really easy. Just put the whole coffee grounds and the filters can go in the compost. The K cups again kind of make it um, so. You, the only thing you can really do is if you, are, again, are willing to take the time, peel that foil part back and dump the contents, the grounds, into the compost, but the rest of it's just garbage. So, yeah, so I'm not a fan of those. So I'm a good old-fashioned film. <laughs> She'll stay after. So those don't go in the recycling bin. 